Hey, what is going on music producers? In this video, I wanted to tackle a question I recently just read on the internet, which was what is the fastest way to learn synthesis? And this is a great question, especially for music producers, because there's a lot of different kinds of synthesis and there's different kinds of synthesizers and there is a ton of complexity that you can go into in any kind of synthesizer patch. But um, I think the best way to look at it is a way that you could do with really any plug-in or hardware synthesizer you might have on hand. Here I'm in Ableton, I'm just going to grab Drift, which is sort of like the entry-level synthesizer for Ableton Lite. So most people have it if you have like any version of Ableton 12. And um, this is a subtractive synthesizer, but the main thing I want you to focus on is right here, the envelope. So it's good to know what oscillators are, it's good to know what the filter is, it's, it's good to know what LFOs do, but the envelope is kind of the secret behind the basic idea of a lot of synthesizer type sounds. So think of something like a keyboard patch, for instance, I'll just play a chord on here. You know, if you turn the sustain all the way down, you can really quickly go from a keyboard sound to a more kind of plucky sound. So oftentimes going from a keyboard to a pluck type preset is oftentimes just the lack of sustain. So, you know, the decay is much shorter, you know, that type of thing. And this would also be considered like a polyphonic sound, right? So you would have keyboard type sounds, which is like this kind of, you know, style of envelope. And then you can have a pluck synth where you kind of lose the sustain. It's all about how long that decay is. And then you can also have pads. And pads can be very similar, except the attack is much longer. So it takes time for the synth to reach its full volume level. Right? So I go like that. Basically like three plus seconds on the attack. Now, again, people can argue about all the different details of any synthesizer sound, but generally speaking, if you go to the presets folder on a synthesizer, you go to the pad folder, right? The pad sub folder for those presets, they're generally gonna have longer attacks, right? So that makes it kind of like a pad synth. And you can or cannot have, you know, a longer release as well, which is gonna dictate when you let go of the keyboard. So the sound drifts away, right? But that's also optional too for pads. And so there you go, you've got a keyboard sound, you've got a pluck synth sound, you've got a pad sound. These are all polyphonic sounds. Notice I'm in poly mode, so I can play more than one note at the same time. If I was going to go to mono mode, this is kind of where you're entering the world of uh, like leads and basses. So it's good to have your bass be in mono because you might not want the notes to sort of um, smudge into one another. And so, you know, it's a very typical synth bass sound. And um, a lot of times a bass kind of looks like this in the envelope. It's kind of like a sort of rectangle looking thing. You might have a slower attack. The attack can vary, but it's usually pretty quick. It's not like a pad and it has usually full sustain. And of course, these things can be variable, but, you know, it kind of looks like a rectangle type thing, right? And a lead is actually very similar, except you're maybe not playing bass notes. You probably are, you know, playing up here. And leads can be really heavy sounds. You know, super stacked sounding. And that's why they feature something called legato, because if you wanted to glide from note to note, you can do that. So basically, basses and leads are very similar, again, by just looking at the envelope. It really comes down to just that. And then that might also apply to arpeggiation type sounds. In this case, we have to take one extra step and just go to MIDI effects in Ableton. We're doing this in. Grab the arpeggiator, place it before. This is a MIDI effect, so it has to go before the instrument. And now if I play a polyphonic chord, It's going to trigger that sound, um, you know, sync to the BPM, right? So that's kind of basically an arpeggiation sound, what it comes down to, right? And the envelope plays a big role in there too, because I have full sustain, but I can play around with this. So if I was to turn the sustain off, 
You can play around with the shortness of the sound through the decay and create very tight arpeggiation sequences. Um, you can also make that decay longer and longer. But at a certain point, it won't matter because this is a monophonic sound. If I go and make it polyphonic, and I turn up the release, you can make those notes glide into each other, almost like a strumming type effect. So there you go. There's some different things you can do with an arpeggiator. And that's, you know, what, five, six, seven different kinds of sounds that if you go into a preset folder on a synthesizer, you now might understand a lot more about just by looking at the amp envelope. Yes, there's a ton going on with a synthesizer you can dive way more into, including modulation parameters and all that other kind of stuff. But if you're just getting started with synthesis, uh, grab a subtractive synthesizer, because in my opinion, I think they're a little bit easier to understand for beginners. And uh, just play around with the amp envelope and you'll realize that you could actually go into some of these presets that you that you have on your on your synthesizers and you can adjust them. You could take a keyboard sound and turn it into a pad pretty much by just, you know, raising the attack or turn, uh, you know, a lead sound into a polyphonic sound just by finding that mode parameter and giving yourself more voices that you can play with on the keyboard. Stuff like that it gives you a ton of autonomy and independence with your sound. So I hope you guys find this video useful, especially if you're a beginner. And maybe it simplified some things for you or just gave you an introduction that you can get a little more confidence with in programming synth sounds. If you like this content, hit the like button and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. Have fun making music.